Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel, Cyber High School, a place for academic excellence and a place to sharpen our skills. My name is Petros Fare. In today's lesson, we are going to be talking about angle properties. It is important for us to understand that we are surrounded by angles every day. Whether we are flying in aeroplanes or we are navigating on the sea or mountain climbing, angles are an important aspect of our day-to-day -day lives. Our starting point could be to define what an angle is. On the left, we do have some jumbled words and some definitions on the right that correspond to the words that can be formed out of um, the letters on the left. We are going to be looking at what are the letters which can be formed out of these words. You might actually need to pause this video and quickly find a way you can rearrange these letters so that they can match with the definitions which are on the right. Now, it is clear that we can formulate the word parallel from the combination of these letters and opposite angle and obtuse. Okay, now a parallel when we talk about parallel lines, these are lines which are the same distance apart and they never meet. When we are talking about angles, it is important for us to know that when two lines intercept each other, these angles, they form angles which are called opposite angles. And as per definition, an angle is a measure of 10, which we measure in degrees. So it is a measure of 10 and it's always measured in degrees. Let's get started. So our objective for this lesson is to calculate the size of angles between parallel lines and in triangles. You must be able to apply the properties of angles at a point, angles on a straight line and vertically opposite angles. You should be able to understand the use and use the relationship between parallel lines and alternate and corresponding angles. Before we move forward, it is important for us to know that there are several types of angles which are there. We do have acute angles, which are those angles which are between 0 and 90 degrees. And at 90, we call the angle right angle. And when we have angles which are between 90 degrees and 180, we call those obtuse angles. And then, when an angle is 180 degrees, it is called a straight line. Finally, we do have a reflex angle, which are those angles between 180 up to 360. So any angle that falls in this range is called a reflex angle. Those are important concepts which you need to understand as you progress with the lesson for today. Now, let us quickly have a look at this activity. We do have a straight line and a line that is dividing the straight line. How can we calculate the value of D? How can you calculate the value of D when you know that this angle is 45, 42 degrees? You can pause and quickly calculate. Let's see your answer. D is equal to 138 degrees. You might say, how do you find the value of D? Remember, I have just mentioned that angles on a straight line, they make 180 degrees. So to calculate the value of D, you need to subtract 180 degrees minus 42 degrees. That gives you 
138 degrees. Now, let's look at the second example. If this angle is a right angle, which is equal to 90 degrees, how then can we calculate the value of D in this scenario? You can pause the video and quickly calculate and let's see how your answer would be. Let's get back and reveal what this answer is supposed to be. D is equal to 31 degrees. So to calculate D, you simply subtract 90 degrees minus 59 degrees. And that gives us the value of D. Let's look at a third scenario. Remember, when we started this lesson, we talked about lines when two lines are crossing each other. They form angles on the vertical places. These are called vertically opposite angles. The same as these angles, these ones will be horizontally opposite angles. But what you just have to know is the word opposite angle. In most of the cases, when you are asked to answer questions in any examination paper, according to the British syllabus, you need to know that you will be asked to give an answer and also justify or give a reason why that angle is that size. In this scenario, you then have to calculate the value of x. So what do you think is the value of x? Obviously, x is equal to 60 degrees and the reason being is opposite angles. So your reasoning will be x is equal to 60 degrees because they are vertically opposite angles. Let's look at this last example. You are given angles which are meeting at a point. As you know that when you have angles meeting at a point, the total size of these angles must give you 360 degrees. So, let's calculate the value of x if we know that this gives us 360 degrees. You may have to quickly calculate this, pause the video, and let's see your answer. Okay. X is definitely equal to 115 degrees. As we are progressing with this lesson, I want you to do self-assessment. Every time we pause, you make a calculation, please know that it is time for self-assessment. You calculate and remember to mark. And if you have marked, if you got it correct, well done. But even if you didn't get it correct, it's an opportunity to learn. You need to understand that making mistakes is part of learning. Now, I want you to understand a new concept that we are going to look at in today's lesson. Whenever you have two lines which are marked by these arrows, it might be just one arrow or two arrows, this means these two lines are parallel. Now, if you have a line which cuts over these parallel lines, we call this line a transversal. So this transversal will form some angles with these two lines which are parallel. I want you to look at this angle 25 degrees and this angle x. If you look properly, you will see they form a shape which is a z shape. Now, Angles which are like this, we call them alternate angles, and they are always the same. If you can draw two lines which are parallel, and you have a protractor, you can measure, you can verify to see that these angles are parallel. In this scenario, it simply means angle X is also equal to 25 degrees. So, because they are Z angle or they are called alternate angles. This takes us to our next platform. So, when we started, we saw that angles which are on a right angle, a right angle is 90 degrees. 
So the angles which are on a right angle, they add up to 90 degrees. So the value of A plus B is equal to 90 degrees. The second part is angles on a straight line, they add up to 180 degrees. This simply means A plus B is equal to 180 degrees. So if you are given any of these angles, just know that that sum will be 180 degrees. Also, you need to know that there are vertically opposite angles. Vertically opposite angles are the same. They are formed by two straight lines which cross each other. This means A is equal to C and also B is equal to D and they are vertically opposite angles. And finally, angles meeting at a point add up to 360 degrees. That means A plus B plus C plus D is equal to 100, 360 degrees. So that is a full 10. I want you to pause this video and quickly jot down these important points because you need to be referring to them. All right. Now, it's time for us to move on. Angles between parallel lines. The first type which we have already talked about is called the alternate angles. Alternate angles are angles which are equal. They are also sometimes referred to as, as Z angles. Now, if you look closely, you find alternate angles, they form a Z shape. It can be this side or the opposite side. They also are forming a Z-shape. Right. From this shape which we are having here, which angles can you say they are alternate angles? Which angles are alternate angles? Identify alternate angles from this. Okay. It's time to look at what you have done. It is clear that angle D and F are Z angles are all alternate angles. And also angle C and E are alternate angles too. Well done if you managed to pick this. If you have not managed, don't worry. You have learned the important aspect. The next type of an angle which we are looking at is what is known as the corresponding angles. These are also angles which can be known as F angles. They form an F shape. These are angles which are located in the same position of these two parallel lines. This angle and that one are corresponding angles. So as this angle here above and the angle above on the other location. So as the other one. And finally, this combination. Now, I want you to find two pairs of angles which are corresponding in this structure. Let's see. Please list all of them down. Pause the video and list. Then we can move on once you are done. Okay. So, corresponding angles, according to this diagram, A and E are corresponding, D and H are corresponding, and also B and F are corresponding, and finally C and G are corresponding angles. Well done. Now, let's look at this example here. What is the value of A? using the information or the knowledge that you have acquired in this lesson. Pause this video and please give an answer and justify the reason why you say A is equal to that and B is equal to that. Right. It is important for us to understand that A is equal to 140 degrees why? Because they are corresponding angles. 
Then when it comes to B, B is equal to 140 degrees because it is vertically opposite with A. It is also important to know that B is also 140 because it's an alternate angle with this 140 which you have here. So your reason can either be vertically opposite with A or an alternate angle that will be correct. Right. I want us to look at what we have covered today. So by this, I want you to go through this exercise, post the video, work out the values of these angles, and after that, you will continue playing the video and self-assess or mark your work. Ah. Right. It's time for self-assessment. It is important to note that A is 60 degrees because it is corresponding. And in this scenario, X is equal to 130 because it's also corresponding. What about this scenario? We do have 70 and the value of P. What is P? For you to calculate P using the knowledge you acquired in this lesson, you need to find out that this is 70 and then which means this angle here is also equal to 70 degrees. Then applying the concept of angles on a straight line, you can now subtract 180 minus 70 to get the value of P which is then 110. It is also important to know that there is one type of an angle which is also known as core interior angles. If you have two straight lines which are parallel, it simply means the inside angles between the lines are core interior angles and they add up to 180. Finally, if you look at these two parallel lines, you look at this size which is 125 it is evident that d is also equal to 125 and finally the value of x given that these two lines are parallel obviously there is a z angle which is formed by this line here so we do have x as 40 degrees i always advise students to turn your paper around so that the parallel lines are parallel to your eyes so that that can help you to understand the concept of the z angle formed by these two you can even free, um, extend this line so that this becomes very clear to you to calculate the value of y we have to add up 60 plus 40 to get 100 then we subtract from 180 to get y being equal to 80 degrees and finally knowing that we know that this angle is 40 and y is 80 what is the value of z angle z being an angle inside a triangle then simply means we can add 40 plus 80 then subtract from 180 degrees please remember angles in a triangle they add up to 180 that's why we used that principle to find the value of z so what is your score okay if you have achieved all well done if you got some of the questions wrong it's still okay at least you have learned the most important element this marks the end of today's lesson.